So guys, this is really important and this is a little trick. I day guys so for today's video I'm gonna be doing one that you guys have actually been asking me to do for a while and I had to get through my whole collection and kind of like get ideas of all the equipment that I used to use and the equipment I use now so I figured that now would be the perfect time to share with you guys all the equipment that I use for filming especially if you guys are wanting to get into YouTube or if you just kind of like photography and you kind of want to know the kind of equipment that I'm using I wanted to go ahead and share it with you now just because we're right Right near the holidays so now is the perfect time to ask Santa for some new equipment for your YouTube channel. <laughs> I have a bunch of stuff to go over with you. I'm gonna show you guys different options. I'm gonna have my cheaper option, kind of like what I started off with, and then I'll get into the equipment I'm using right now. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button before I get into the video and let's do that right now. First thing I'm gonna do is start off with the equipment that I used to use. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys that this equipment is very good equipment. I didn't start off using an iPhone or anything like that, even though I will tell you that iPhone's quality nowadays is really good. However, I do think that when you're filming videos for things like beauty, or if you're in like the beauty kind of realm, fashion maybe even as well, you have to think that your quality does have to be a little bit higher than if you're just do, doing like standard YouTube videos because beauty you're trying to show off like colors, you wanna show off eye details in fashion, you're also trying to show off colors and trying to show like how different things look together. So if you're in like the beauty or styling or fashion area of YouTube, I do strongly believe that you need to have something a little bit better than just the iPhone. If you're trying to do anything else on YouTube, an iPhone could be great, especially if you're just having like dialogue or if you're just talking and your whole entire YouTube channel is about talking about different things, then you could definitely film those type of things on an iPhone. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the equipment I started with. So I did not start with anything that was super cheap, but I will tell you this is a lot cheaper option than what I'm using right now. So, so I started filming with a Sony camera and this is the camera right here. It's a Sony A6000. I'm actually gonna be listing this camera on eBay. So if I'm able to, which I think I will, I'm gonna have links down below to the equipment that I'm actually selling on eBay. So if you guys wanna go there and let's say you're trying to get a good deal on something, I'm gonna be selling some of this equipment on eBay. So look down below and look for the links. But yeah, so this is a Sony A6000. This is a very good camera. Now, the thing that I have an issue with this camera and why I upgraded to a different camera is because I like to film with studio lights. This camera, the A6000, works so good with natural light. So it really has like this beautiful picture when you're filming with nat when you're filming with natural light. But if you're trying to use studio lights, I do think that this camera is a little bit harder to do a color balance with. And since I've already figured that I don't really know what time I have to film, I need studio lights. So that's why I like filming with studio lights. I used to use this one more often. I used to sit in front of a window and I had great, 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 great light from the natural light. And this worked really, really good. Now the lens that I used to film with is this one right here. It's a 1650. This is not a zoom lens so I would use this lens if I wanted to have the camera a little bit further away from me and it's kind of, I think it's the one that actually comes with the camera they come together and it's a good lens this is a good starter camera now another thing I love about this camera in specific is if you guys are doing more like vlogging or if you want your camera to come along with you this is a very lightweight camera because this is a mirrorless camera it is not a DSLR so because of that the camera is really compact is really compact the only downside Side to this camera is the, the actual screen on the back does not flip forward so you can't actually see yourself but I actually got really used to using it that way and I would plug this camera into a monitor when I would film anyways so it didn't really bother me but yeah so this is the camera that I started with and this is the lens I started with I also had this lens when I wanted to do like real zoomed in pictures or videography depending on what I was filming so if I was trying to do some eye details I would switch out to this lens now this lens is the 55 by 210 and it's a more zoomed in lens it zooms in really really good and sometimes I actually filmed a lot with this lens as well so both of these lenses are really good they serve different purposes and they work really good for the camera. 
But as I started getting into YouTube even more, I wanted to up my game when it came to kind of quality and portrait and getting the background a little bit more blurred out. So I upgraded my lens to this lens and this is also going to be sold. Um, this is the 18 by 105 and it's a Sony prime lens and this actually lets you do a little bit more detail. It looks a lot crisper of a picture. This lens is actually made more for the DSLR cameras from Sony, but I did use it with the mirrorless camera and it worked. So I was happy with that. And it did give me that blur effect in the background. And this is like the next lens up when I was using this camera. And all of these actually worked really, really good. And I used this for probably like a year and a half. Now, another thing that I had to use, so this is another piece of equipment that I needed when I was starting out, was the audio on most cameras are not gonna be like really good and crisp. So I had to up my audio game. So what I did was I purchased this right here and that is because on the Sony a6000, there is actually no mic input. So you have to use their little slot up here. This is like a Sony microphone that they actually made for, I think this is called the hot shoot of the camera. So then you would just slip it in here and it would be like a good crisp audio. This audio worked a lot better for a specific amount of time that I needed it, especially when I wanted to have the camera close to me. The audio was a lot better with this, but as you're on YouTube, you always want things to get a little bit better. So then um, eventually I upped my audio to this right here. So this is the Zoom H1 Handy Recorder. And what I would do is I would have this audio stuck to my camera and this one with a lapel mic on my actual body so that if for some reason this stopped working, my audio was still somewhat decent coming out of the camera. So I had like a safeguard going, but this audio was a lot more crisp than this one was. So it was kind of like upping it a little bit. So that was kind of like my camera setup that I had. At first I used to just sit in front of daylight with this equipment and it used to work pretty decent. I used to have to have soft boxes on either side of me just to reflect, kind of like to take away the shadows from the side of you. But as I started getting into it more, I actually purchased a ring light. Now the ring light was really great and I used to use the ring light a lot in the beginning. The ring light kind of gives you a softness to the face. It also gives you that little ring in your eyes. If you guys ever see somebody's eyes look like super shiny, it's probably because they're using a ring light. The ring light did a really good effect and I was able to use it for a while and that was my entire setup and it worked really, really, really good for a decent period of time. Now, what ended up happening is like always, you decide that you wanna either up your camera game or you kinda of wanna relocate where you're filming. So when I decided to relocate where, not where I was filming and I kinda of wanted to go inside an office just so that my stuff wouldn't be all over the living room, I decided to come to an office and my office was a lot darker. So what ended up happening is my Sony a6000 was not working as good anymore because the lighting wasn't as bright anymore. This camera works a lot better when you have natural light. So I kind of lost the natural light and now I was like, okay, now I gotta actually add light and make this like a real studio light. So that's when I decided that I was going to have to upgrade. So I already had been doing YouTube for like a year and a half. I already knew I liked it and I really like cameras. So for me to upgrade was not like a big issue. I was like, okay, great. I think I really wanna do this. I wanna upgrade my camera. So one of the things that was really important to me was even though I had the Sony equipment, I started to have to think like, what is it that I really want out of my camera in my new space? And one of the things were that I really needed better white balance and I needed something that was able to bring in a little bit more light to the space that's a little darker so that the so that the picture looks a lot better and I decided I needed to move up to a DS I needed to get a DSLR camera and that was just to get more light into the frame and I decided to go with Canon instead of Sony so this was a hard decision because I already had a prime lens from Sony and I just I don't know there was just something about Canon's DSLRs that really, really called my attention. And I knew that I needed to go with the Canon. So my new setup now, um, I was able to purchase the Canon 80D, which is a fantastic camera. I'm gonna show you guys the setup with my iPhone, just so you guys can take a little tour of what I've got going on right now. 
But yeah, so I upgraded to the Canon 80D. This is a fantastic camera. The white balance on this camera is insanely good. Now, I will tell you guys, I love my Sony, and especially for vlogging, or if I ever need to take pictures outside or anything, I usually gravitate to this one because this Canon 80D is super heavy. <laughs> so if you're using this camera, it's mostly to just be filming or to like do a portrait photography outside, but this is not gonna be like a camera you're gonna be taking with you a lot of places because this is a big heavy duty camera. Do you know what I mean? So either way, the Canon AD is the camera I'm filming off of right now. I love the camera. I think it works really, really good. I also am pairing it with a Sigma lens. So the Canon lenses are a lot more expensive, but the good thing about Canon is Canon actually is able to use some other like third party lenses. So the lens that I use with this camera is from Sigma, it's the 18 to 35 lens. It is such a good lens. It gives me that blurred background like really good, but it also is a little bit more zoomed in. It's like a portrait lens, so you get like a good portrait shot. But, like for filming right now, this is a great lens and this looks great for portrait shots. But if I ever wanted to do like real detail eye work, I know I'm gonna have to change my lens eventually. Now you can use this lens, like if I wanted to do detail work, I can get like really close to the camera to kind of like do it that way. The only thing is like if I wanted to take pictures outside and stuff, the best way to use it is portrait. If I'm trying to get like close, it can get a little bit um, off with like what to zoom in with. If I ever wanted to do like more detail work and like really zoom in on the eye, I would probably want to get a more zoom lens for the Canon camera, but that's another story and that's another upgrade video, which hopefully one day I'll be able to add another lens to my little setup because I really, really want to. But besides that, right in front of my camera, I do have a monitor. Now guys, this is really important and this is a little trick. I put my monitor right underneath my lens. I do this on purpose so that if I look down and I look at myself, you cannot tell too much that I'm looking at a monitor or if I'm looking off the screen. Some people like to put their monitor to the left or to the right and what happens is you usually see them kind of like going like this a lot. I'm just looking like this, I'm looking at it right now. So it's a little bit harder for you guys to notice that I'm looking at the monitor. It's a little bit less distracting than somebody going like this all the time or like this. So I do that on purpose. Now this monitor was pretty cheap and it's not even like one of those, I think it's like a little TV or a little monitor. I have no idea what it is, but I found it on Amazon. I will link it down below if you guys are looking for it. It works with an HDMI cable to your camera and it works fine. The color is not perfect. It's not gonna tell you exactly the color that you're looking at, but I don't really need that. I needed it more for me. I just needed it to be able to see that I'm recording and that I'm in frame and that I'm not blurry. That's really why I needed a monitor. I trust the color balance so good on this Canyon 80D that the color looks decent on the monitor. I know it's probably even better on camera. So besides that, if I go over, you guys will see, I actually use now a Rode mic. So this is the mic that I am using currently and it's a great mic. Now what I do is I actually put it on the stand. I forgot the name of what they're called. Is it called like a shotgun stand or something like that. I'll list it down below, but I got online and it allows me to put the mic like directly overhead. I didn't want to put it on top of a table or anything just because I don't want to be throwing the mic on the floor. So this allows me to put it directly above me. You don't hear any movement or anything like that because it stays right above my head and it is connected directly into my Canon 80D. Then if we talk about the lights, this is probably my favorite purchase ever is the lights that I'm using. This was a recommendation from Raw Beauty Christie. I saw it on her channel and I love this light. So this is what they call like a barn door light. Now, there is a more expensive version of this. I think it's called the Kino Flow Lights or something like that. And she kept on saying in her video that this was very similar and it did a really good light quality and it's not as expensive. I only purchased one of these lights. I know a lot of people have two of them, but I just felt like I didn't need that much light. And I'm telling you, I think with this one light just right in front of me, I get like such a perfect, 
color and I don't know it's just not too bright it's like perfect I don't even think I would want two of these like I just think one was perfect I attached one of those softbox softeners on top of it just so the light was not so bright in my face and it kind of softened the light and then I just taped to the top of this light and I love this setup so far so I have the light in the back I have the camera directly in front of the light but lower than the light so that the light so it's not blocking any of the light that's hitting my face the light is kind of tilted down towards me so that it's getting straight here but it's not directly in my face and then it has the softening on top of it and then right in front of my lens is my monitor so if I look down it's not so obvious that I'm looking at myself so then in front of that is where my little mic stand stand is and here it is and I could just bring it down and put it back up every once in a blue moon you might see this right here show up in my videos, but that is just me messing up. What I have to the left of me is one umbrella stand light that I put really high up and I face it towards my head so that it kind of gives my hair a little shine and it also kind of like evens out any like um, shadows that you may see. Then on the right of me, I actually have a white wall here. So uh, all the lights are kind of bouncing off of this wall. So I already have that kind of like bouncer. On the left of me, I have this umbrella, which kind of like throws the light back this way. So I think they kind of like play off each other and they have worked really good. So I haven't had to touch that. I have this like really simple brown little tiny desk that I could fold away and put to the side because I double this as an office. So this little tiny desk is just there thrown in front of me. And basically I use it to like, if I'm putting on any makeup, I'll put it here here so that I could just easily put it on in front of the camera and I have this reflector sitting on top of it now the reflector what it's doing is grabbing all of these lights it's bouncing it down and up and it's making me look more reflective and pretty and it does do a really big difference I can tell when I forget to put this up I totally can tell but everybody forgets that all of these lights in the front are really important but you got to have something going on in the back and lights need to be in the back in order to really make this shot look like almost just so this shot doesn't look flat. A lot of people, what I see that they do, that it's a huge mistake in my opinion, is they forget about the back and either they sit way too close to their backdrop or they forget to add lights to the back. Now, something that I think is super important and if you take anything from this, just listen to this one part and this is something that I have learned and really love. I think that your light should be at least like five feet from you and then behind you, your backdrop should be like another five feet from you. And I think with that, you have a pretty good depth of field so that everything kind of looks good. If you have to sit too close to your background, you're never really gonna have that dimension on camera. It's just not gonna look as good. So my background is like five feet from me. Um, right here I have a desk. So let me get out of the way. So right here I just have a desk. This is part of my desk and it's kind of like an L-shaped desk. So I'll show you guys on my iPhone. It's an L-shaped desk. So here is, this is all empty space, empty white space desk. And then I have two lights in the center. Those two lights in the center are actually white lights. They are projecting white light to my backdrop so that my backdrop gets even more crisp. And then on the two sides, I have two standalone lamps that are just standing on each side and they're pointing towards the backdrop to make the backdrop even whiter. What happens is if you don't have lights in the back, your backdrop's gonna look gray and you don't want your backdrop to look gray because it's just not adding anything to your video it looks weird like I could probably take down this white background and just use my backdrop as my wall but the reason I don't want to do that is because I love the real crisp white look and this right here is just a piece of fabric that's a piece of fabric that I bought. It's a lycra fabric and I love it because it you it's it's kind of like a reflector and it gives you that real crisp white look which I love. And even if I had a white wall, I think I would still put a white fabric behind me just because I think it just does something to the overall look of the video. If that was just a wall, I think it would look even flatter. And right now it just, it's kind of like another reflector in other words, because since it's white, it's reflecting all of these lights and it's just turning super white, which is what I really love. But of course, like I'm saying before, and this is super important, you have to have that depth of field in order for everything to kind of like look right. Otherwise, 
if you're too close to the white background, the camera will be too close. And even if you don't have that much space in your house, you just have to like kind of plan it. Like, how can I rearrange things so that I can have a good depth of field? Because on camera, people can't tell what's behind you or what's in front of you. So if you have to rearrange something so it looks weird to your eye, who cares? As long as in the camera, it looks good. That's all you need. So anyways, so that's my backdrop. Then I have these little string lights that are here that sometimes you guys can see them, sometimes you can't. I just like that they add a little bit of sparkle sometimes to the back of my videos and I like it so and then I also love to add greenery now right now I have like a little Christmas tree um, here in the background and then on this side I always have those little palm leaves they're just clipped onto my backdrop so this is all like fake this is like a basically like a stage in other words and then this desk, I have it to hold my decorations. Over here, I just have a little Christmas tree because it's Christmas time. I have my little golden pineapple type of thing that I'll throw in. I have my little flowers. Basically, my props. I have different props for different seasons and I just have them thrown here on the corner and then as the season changes, I just interchange them and throw them into the scene. Um, I also have some really cool eucalyptus leaves that I'm thinking of throwing into next year. So. Basically, I think of this right here as a prop and studio space and that's all I think of it as. And then right on this side, this is actually my office space. And right now it's full of makeup because I gotta do a declutter, but usually this is where we would use to actually use as an office. And when I'm not filming, Everything stays as it is, but I kind of like just close the table and put a chair here. I can move the mic and the umbrella out of the way, but my camera, my monitor, and my big light will never move. The backdrop never moves, and I leave this always like this. Like this stays this way, but this part over here that you guys never see, this is constantly changing. There's laptops up here or whatever it is, or books or whatever we're doing is on this table. So yeah, then for my chair, I have this fake white kind of like cloth over a regular office chair just so that you guys can't see the chair because I like, I like, like I said, the white crisp look. So yeah, that's basically what I've done. I wanna change this chair out eventually just because I want a cooler chair for this office, but I'm still working on the actual office. This has been the hardest room to fix up. That's why I've never done like a collection tour. It's because my office is not fixed yet. I'm still trying to make it look cooler and um, I don't know, I'm just not, it's not perfect. So summarize everything, I would tell you, decide what you wanna do in the beginning. If you think this is gonna be for me, for sure I'm going to love this, then I would tell you, use your iPhone, film yourself a couple of times and see if you're any good at it, see if you like it, see if you're able to keep up with a schedule. And if that is the case, and you can afford a more expensive camera, I tell you to jump into the more expensive camera because it's just, it's better quality and it's good. If you cannot afford this, a more expensive camera, that is fine. There's cheaper cameras on the market that are really, really good. If you wanna go with a Sony or if you wanna go with a Canon, it's whatever you want, that's up to you. I personally, as of right now, I'm preferring Canon just because I wanna interchange the lenses. I also wanna get a smaller Canon because I like photography. So for me, I always need to have a camera, which is really funny because the other day my friend was over my house and I was taking a picture and I gave her my actual camera and she was like, whew, you still have one of these? And I was like. So either way guys, this is the stuff that I use. If you guys have any questions about anything, please leave it down below. I know there's a lot of information in here and there's a lot of techie stuff. I am not a photographer. Do I love photography? Yes. Have I tried to venture into learning photography? I have. Have I always been into it? Yes. So I do know a little bit, but I'm not like a professional. I kind of have ideas but I'm not a professional, but I would love to help anybody who wants help, so I'll help you. That's what I'm using. I'm super happy with my current setup. I think it's fantastic. I will also tell you guys that even though ring lights are good, I honestly am one of those people that now, I'm like, I would never go back to a ring light after having the light that I have. And I think that the price is very similar between what I paid for the ring light and the price that I paid for the light that I have right now. And the light that I have right now is so much better. So much more real tones to the face and everything that I love it. So 
Anyways, I really hope this video helped you. If you guys are interested in any of the items that I talked about, I will link everything down below. I'll put them in current setup and old setup and prices and all that stuff. I'll try to put everything that I can down below, but Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you guys want me to get more in depth on how to place lighting or why I place lighting in certain places or if there's a specific thing I talked about that you want more details on. I'll try to help you with that as much as I can. And just remember, this is all beauty related. If you're filming like other type of videos, you may not think that some of the stuff that I said is important. But for the beauty realm, I think that most of the things are pretty needed. So anyways, thank you for, t anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I helped you and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.